The, this next presentation is on hydrogen sulfide uh, from an NRCS perspective. Please help me welcome Jose Alotshaw from Pennsylvania NRCS, who he tells me has been there forever. So. <laughs> Um, I'm, sitting, I'm sitting next to Eileen. She just leaned over and said, Jose, knock him dead. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. <laughs> just exactly the opposite. And uh, uh, we're trying to prevent knocking people dead. Um, there we go. And it's, it's at the top one there. Uh, uh, that's the point. Yeah, very good. Okay, kind of a niche thing here with um, gypsum. Uh, gypsum for bed. Um, and I'll get to the, the, the good things about gypsum and why it's really good to recycle gypsum and what this can do for dairy farmers. But uh, gypsum uh, hydrogen sulfide and, uh, and gypsum uh, revisited. Um, we had uh, an incident in Pennsylvania that really brought this to our attention and, uh, and I'll cover that here in just a little bit. Um, but uh, there are some dairy farmers that are using gypsum as a niche type of of bedding, and um, uh, when we started asking around about this, uh, we got a lot of information that uh, there have been a lot of accidents with hydrogen sulfide and with the gypsum and the excessive hydrogen sulfide that gypsum can produce in anaerobic dairy manure. And um, so that's really what we wanted to talk about here a little bit, and I want to frame this a little bit with a little bit of the history in, in Pennsylvania, and then I want to talk about what our reaction, what NRCS's reaction has been to this and the, and the things that we've uh, moved out on in this case. And um, the new concern, we've always known that min, uh, dairy manure and other manures have uh, a lot of bad gases with them. That's, there's nothing new there. The new thing is, though, that when you add a lot of sulfur in, and gypsum can, can actually do that with a lot of volume, uh, you can significantly increase hydrogen sulfide uh, production excessively. Another thing that uh, hasn't been talked about enough, uh, and you think about it, and people in the business know it, but need to be talked about more often, and that's the agitation process can release really high levels of the dangerous gases. And, um, I came out of, the, I have some construction background and uh, if any of you have placed um, concrete, poured concrete and you put a uh, agitator a, uh, uh, to consolidate your concrete, the air comes out of it, the voids come out of it. And some of that is, it goes on with the agitation process. You stir up, stir up the manure and gas bubbles are released. The crust is released so anything under the crust comes out and then all of the chemistry that goes on with the sludges and the liquid just amazing, the amount of chemistry and the amount of physical things that happen during agitation, and it's not talked about enough. Um, and uh, a lot of people know, a lot of people in the know, know that animals inside the building or storages inside the building are high hazard. Not as many people uh, know when you can have outside storages and have some of the same risks. And one of them that really came about is when you have gypsum in and you agitate and the amount of excess hydrogen sulfide that's produced at that, at that point. So be very careful, even on outside storages. And, then, and um, this is not a staged photograph. This is where an accident occurred. And some of you probably heard about this. And I'll just cut, frame this for just a minute. In uh, 2012, that's what got this started. A man was uh, using uh, gypsum as dairy bedding and it was going into the open top manure storage. He was agitating the manure right behind where the photographer was standing, and he was watching the boys. His uh, two-year-old and four-year-old love to be around them and uh, are always around him, and uh, they were riding their tricycles right there. The nozzle for the agitating unit uh, came from behind the photographer, just out into the area right where the tri tri uh, tricycles are. Within five minutes of agitation, he noticed that the boys had keeled over and were on the ground. Okay, one, was, uh, one had a blue appearance. They stopped right away, called the ambulances. They came quick, and um, one of the boys was relied, uh, revived very quickly on the site. The other one wasn't. They took them both to the hospital. Both of them were re revived quickly in the hospital. One stayed overnight. Um, one came home that night, one came home the next day. No ill effects. The, the, the dad and the grandfather were right there, saw it, and acted immediately. In this case, no ill effects, okay? So just a little bit of frame, that got our attention. 
And, um, and then um, uh, this is a little bit of what I had just said there. But it really got our attention there. And then uh, we moved out on this a little bit. A little background on gypsum before I get to what we did. It's a, a high volume um, product, waste product from the construction industry. Used drywall is what we're talking about. And there's a lot of it. It is, uh, I'm told, it's the largest volume, largest weight byproduct that comes out of construction industry. So if we're interested in recycling and creating um, worth out of waste, this is really a good thing to do. And I am a big recycler. I recycle at home. So uh, this is a, there's a need to go places with this type of material. Um, it's great for soil amendment. And there are folks on the agenda later today that will talk about that also. Um, a large volume by weight, uh, the, you know, the chemistry of it is sulfur. So when you're putting the gypsum in, by the ton, by putting this bedding in by the ton, you're putting in tons of sulfur, sulfur, uh, hydrogen sulfide. So uh, be very careful with that. And, um, and the more we talked about it, the more people came forward and said, oh yeah, uh, this happened, and I guess that was hydrogen sulfide. Or there was a, a case in Maryland in 2012 where three manure haulers went down, and the newspaper and the emergency people thought it was methane. I think it was hydrogen sulfide. Okay, if you <coughs> read through that and go back, uh, they, you know, they drop over quick. Okay, you don't lose your breath short. It's one breath, and the poison talk, the poison, it poisons you. Okay. Okay. And uh, at, this, at this point, we uh, wanted to uh, do something with one of our CIG grants. We put out um, uh, information for that, and we partnered with uh, Eileen from Penn State. And uh, Eileen, you and your team came forward with this and, and did a study with us. And uh, you finished up the study, and you had shared the results of the study, I believe, at this conference two years ago. Is that right? And um, the, the final report was really put together December uh, 2015. A wonderful report, and thank you for doing that. Wonderful report. And as a, as a action, as a result of the report, then we took different actions. And that's really what I'd like to focus on a little bit. The first thing we did is in uh, July of 2015, just as the report came out, NRCS put a national bulletin out to all of our people. Um, safety risk from manure storage of dairy cows bedded with gypsum. And I just have the title there. Uh, the rest of it is uh, can be uh, gotten online there. I have the reference up above there. So that was the first action that we took. Um, we also have um, we also have a set of national standards. It was talked about yesterday, Terry. You spoke about that a little bit uh, yesterday. We have national standards that we follow, and then each of the states takes those national standards, and we can ad adapt them to Pennsylvania. To Pennsylvania, in our case, if we if we like and, and as needed. And here's a case. This shows up in the national. Um, amending soil standard that we have. And uh, th this will be, I'm sure this will be talked about a little later for, uh, for using gypsum products on the cropland for soil amendments. Another very good thing, but be careful, tie this together with what my topic is under, aero under anaerobic condi conditions. Gypsum added to liquid manure storage just can result in dangerous levels of hydrogen sulfide. So um, when it's put on the <coughs> cropland, wonderful. I say don't put it, don't do it by putting it in through the liquid manure system. Okay, put it on, find a different way to put it out there. Uh, don't don't put it in as bedding and don't um, don't mix and match like that. So that's the this is something that we ask to be put into our national 333 amending soil properties standard. In Pennsylvania, we're cautious about this, and um, some states will will um, provide a cost sharing or an incentive program to encourage the soil amendments for gypsum to be put out on the cropland in Pennsylvania because of this. We're slow to do this and we haven't adopted that and we're not providing financial assist, uh, incentives for this yet because of this hazard. Um, the third thing that we did, we, we were aggressive and we led and participated in safety programs, workshops, and field days. And we wanted to go to the public and make sure the public knew about this. Uh, we participated in uh, newspaper articles, uh, a variety of newspaper articles, uh, talking about the risk of gypsum and, um, to a lesser degree, other items that can go into manure that have sulfur additions to them, okay? So to a lesser degree. And, uh, and when you, you know, we need to look at anything that goes into manure that has sulfur additions. 
But keep in mind what the mass balance is. And when you're adding it in by the truckload, and when the concentration is as great as what sulfur is in gypsum, you know, just the mass balance side of things is very important to keep in mind. And excessive hydrogen sulfide is possible. Farmers will be surprised at how much hydrogen sulfide is produced. And, and uh, the Penn State CIG um, report that was done for us really shows that in very great detail and very clearly. Another thing that we did, we developed a new sign here, uh, warning during agitation that de deadly gases are possible. This causes a, a stir in our office. Our administrative assistants get a big kick out of this, okay? Not for the on-farm use of this sign, but for the other uses of the sign in, in, in the office. That's my joke, so I don't get much funnier than that. But anyway, we wanted this sign here. We never had a sign to point out what the hazards of agitation are. And, um, and um, uh, it's tremendous. The, um, I was with a field day with, uh, with Eileen and her team in one of our counties, and um, there was no hydrogen sulfide on this, on this manure storage. There was a lot of gypsum in the manure storage, but no hydrogen sulfide gas coming off of it because there's no agitation going on. It's a beautiful day. As soon as the agitation started, within minutes, the hydrogen sulfide was in the, in the beeping range. The meters were going off, okay? Up in the 200 to 300 parts per million, okay? It, it, it maintained that level for about, for the full time the agitation was going on for an hour and a half. And we had other things to do that day, so we turned the agitators off. The tank wasn't empty. It wasn't done making hydrogen sulfide. As soon as the agitator went off and the wind was moving, it's just a calm day with a slight breeze. Within five minutes, the, it went down, and at 10 minutes, there was no gas. So agitation is really important, and we thought, we thought that a separate sign was, was uh, good for here. There's nothing magic about this sign. Um, Nothing magic, you can, uh, you can take a picture of that sign and take it to your sign people in your state and make them, or you can make your own that's similar, okay? <laughs> um, the, another thing that we did, we did a Pennsylvania NRCS fact sheet, and Eileen actually covered some of this material. We, we wanted to do something similar also for NRCS. Eileen, your poster presentation last night has a lot of similarity to this. This particular page uh, is just the top half that covers the, the, um, the, the reasons why underground storages have some um, positive benefits. The items in yellow here point out the, uh, the, some of the other issues. The, se the second one from the bottom, dangerous gases can be present in high concentrations during agitation. Uh, the last one, addition of sulfur products to the manure, sulfur products to the manure produces increased hydrogen sulfide gases which would be in close proximity to the uh, animals. Gypsum, silage, leachate to a lesser degree, potentially deadly during agitation, okay? The, the sixth thing that we did, in, in Pennsylvania we have our, our, um, we have our uh, 313 waste storage standard for uh, manure storages, <coughs> and we added cautions in that standard for in Pennsylvania. Um, and the, the middle one I'll point out, gypsum cannot be added to solid covered or under the barn storages. That includes slatted storages, okay? Um, the seventh thing that we did, we have a waste transfer standard and we added a safety uh, caution in our waste transfer standard. This is normally for piping manure on a farm. Uh, the eighth thing that we did, there had been a, uh, a standard that, or there had been a fact sheet written between Penn State and, um, and the um, Department of Environmental Protection in Pennsylvania, the state agency on uh, safety and emergency responses for manure management systems. It was written in about 2002. We wanted to rewrite it and bring it up to date. We wanted to add some sulfur things in. We also wanted to just increase, uh, bring it up to date on all the other safety items uh, that had changed over the last 10 years. Um, another thing that we wanted to do, we wanted to make sure that people gave the right, like the, the media and the public and the <coughs> emergency uh, responders gave the right attention to hydrogen sulfide. Too many of the manure uh, uh, articles say this, instant, this incident was caused by methane. Actually, in my opinion, the first gas that ought to be looked at is hydrogen sulfide. And, and I, it, it shouldn't say methane, they should really look at hydrogen sulfide first as the go-to. 
Okay, uh, which, which causes people to keel over immediately? Hydrogen sulfide. Which is heavy and is down at where the people operate? Hydrogen sulfide. Which gas should be considered, which gas um, should be considered as the probable first cause? In my opinion, hydrogen sulfide. Um, oh, also recognize that, that uh, ethanol byproducts uh, from the distillery industry, they often use um, sulfuric acid for a variety of reasons. Um, chemistry, sanitation, pH control, and that can leave behind increased uh, sulfur content, so be careful. That's not, um, that's not from, the, from the beer, okay? That's not the case. It's the ethanol side of things. Be careful there. To a lesser extent, uh, watch for silage leachate, foot baths, and uh, high sulfur in drinking water. And, and again, mass balance. When you look at mass balance, uh, gypsum is really high on mass balance. Um, we also took an approach. We think that we need to be talking to farmers and uh, manure haulers to have more access to uh, meters. And uh, the Penn State folks here, two photos from them, a typical meter, about $1,500. Manure haulers should be having them. Some farmers should have them. We bought four of them. We don't want to test for people. We don't want to be the testing agency. That's not our job. We want to show them and say, you ought to have something like this to test. And uh, my summary, we always knew that there were, we always knew that there were deadly gases. Hydrogen sulfide is a special one, in my opinion, okay? The most deadly gas. Gypsum contains enough sulfur to produce excessive, and that's not, and that's not, uh, for outdoor storages also. Uh, solid covered, slatted storages hold in gas, especially the heavy gases, and uh, manure agitation releases large quantities of trapped gases. Uh, the websites are live and good. Time for a couple of questions. Yes. So the uh, dairy industry typically adds something like copper sulfate for uh, minimizing hoof. They do. Disease. They do. So can that be a contributor to yes. the mass in the barn? Yes, it can. I think that the mass, the mass balance side of things. You know, I think they're they're using. Uh, I, I've never tended cows, but you know, I think they're putting in like, I don't know, five gallons um, once a week. And I bet a lot of them uh, don't put it in the manure storage. I bet some of them dip it, or some of them uh, do something else with it, like spread it in somewhere else. But mass balance again. Yes? I've done a lot of work on developing manure amendments, like adding aluminum sulfide to poultry litter. And over the years, and we also developed uh, aluminum chloride for swine or dairy manure. And over the years, I've got a lot of calls from dairy and swine producers. Can I go ahead and put your alum in, in my manure and control ammonia and phosphorus? And I'm like, no. Anytime you got any kind of anaerobic system, you don't want a, a sulfate in there. You use a chloride, aluminum chloride, rather than uh, aluminum sulfate. But broilers, it works great because you don't, you don't get those in there. That should be spoken about more often. I talk about it every, you know, every time I hear someone you know, put alum in one of those systems, I'm like, no, 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 it scares let, me actually bad. Let me say that again. More people should be saying that. <laughs> Thank you. Last question. I just wanted to say for the, for the gypsum, it's not just used for bedding, but it's used um, often to manage bacterial populations related to mastitis that's used for foot health. So it, there is a trade off if you ask and I meant to include that. <laughs> that is one of the, the farmers love it. It's very good in the barn, and I meant to say that also. Thanks for bringing that back in. Please help me thank Hosea and wish him a happy retirement.